I know this has been interesting to you, and how many times have we talked about mixing and matching in past weeks? So this is British research, but key, it's out of Oxford, which is the developing place for, for the AstraZeneca vaccine. And I don't know, I, I'm really interested in, to know what stood out for you in this research. For me, I thought it was kind of interesting and maybe even reassuring that all of the combinations seem to work, just some work better than others. I think exactly that's it. That's the take-home point, right? Whether you've mixed and matched, whether you received Pfizer, whether you, you received AstraZeneca, they all, all have a very robust immune response and you're all afforded significant protection against the virus. And that's the key thing. I think the other important point here is this is one study. It's also nice that this really uh, aligns with other studies that have looked at this as well from Spain and from Germany. So when you start to have three different studies from three different groups in three different countries that are all saying the same thing, you have some degree of confidence that this mixing and matching approach is a safe and effective path forward. It was interesting, too, to read what the researchers were saying. They noticed that mixing does lead to this stronger protective response, but they're still not sure why, and they're intrigued by that. I mean, to you, with your scientific mind, is this a question that you, that you think about or have any theories on why it might be? Yeah, I, I mean, one of the theories is that the vaccines work in slightly different mechanisms and have slightly different uh, spike proteins. So you're just, instead of mounting uh, an, an antibody or immune response to uh, this degree of diversity of the spike protein, you're mounting uh, an antibody response to this degree of, an, uh, of the spike protein. And, you know, maybe that's it, maybe it isn't. Obviously, these are answerable questions we'll probably have some more data later on that explains why that's the case. But from a very practical standpoint, it's just helpful to know that whether people stick with the same product for their first dose or second dose, or whether they mix and match, they are afforded very good protection as we see these antibody and T cell responses are pretty significant. There was some other research into the vaccines that I thought was interesting yesterday. This is out of the Washington University group in St. Louis. They were looking at mRNA vaccines, Dr. Bogosh, and they looked at Pfizer and they looked at Moderna, and they found that both trigger immune responses that last a long time, indeed, maybe years, and maybe without the need for a booster. So something else that you and I have talked about for months is how long does the protection last? How long do we have immunity? What do you see in this research that is interesting to you? Yeah, that was a really neat study. And what they did was they actually sampled uh, lymph nodes uh, from, from people who received the vaccine. They sampled these lymph nodes just about four months after they received the vaccine. And they found within the tissue and, and the sample that they, 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 they took was something called a germinal center. And basically, when you see these germinal centers, you know that within those, there are immune cells, B cells, they're called immune cells that are really uh, primed and learning how to recognize COVID-19, because that's the vaccine that they were given. And when you start to see those even four months later, it's pretty clear that your body is getting ready to mount a long lasting immune response to the virus. I think the key thing here is we still don't know how long immunity is going to last. We, we don't. We just don't because, you know, the virus changes with time. There are mutations in the virus. There are variants that are emerging worldwide. It's not quite clear to what degree those will evade the immune system. But for COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 strains that resemble the ones that we're seeing now uh, that are still we're, we're, we are provided with protection with from the vaccine, yeah, it's pretty clear that there will be a robust, long-standing immunity. But how long? Nobody really knows, unfortunately.